Hey everyone, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today we're going to talk about the Still Series Arctis Nova Pro wired version. This is a $250 headset. You can get it with this color wash. The uh, orange box is your PlayStation slash PC version, and then you can get it with a green box, and that is your Xbox version. The Xbox version still works on PC and PlayStation, but I'll, I'll explain how in just a moment. So this headset was not sent to me for review. I purchased this along with all the other Nova headsets because I'm trying to cover the entire lineup see how it compares against the competition. So with that being said, uh, if you decide you want to purchase this headset, I will have a generic Amazon affiliate link below. It helps support the channel and I use that money to help pay for other headsets so we can keep providing coverage. Regardless if it's sent to me or not, I will not change my opinions on this. I don't run a bias channel. I just do technical deep dives, talk about actual real world use and whether I think it's good or not. So with that being said, I'm gonna have links in the ch uh, below for chapters. That'll help you navigate to what parts of the video you care about. Basically, we're gonna do the features and specs, comfort and build quality, microphone test, sound quality, how it compares against competitors, and then some final thoughts at the end. Now, as far as how the Nova Pro is designed, the DAC or the base unit, this is where all the, the brains are of the operation are. This is the same whether you buy the PlayStation or the Xbox version. And when I say PlayStation version, I'm talking about PC slash PlayStation. So regardless of which one you bought, you get two USB-C ports on the back. On the Xbox version, one of them is labeled as Xbox and the second being USB. On this version, you just see USB 1 and 2. You can use either port for PlayStation or your PC if you buy this version. And on Xbox, the second USB port, the one that's just labeled USB, uh, will work on your computer and it will work on Sony PlayStation just the same as this one does. There is no compatibility loss if you buy the Xbox version. I think most people will find the value in getting the Xbox version in case you have an Xbox or will get one down the road. However, if you have a PC and a PlayStation, just get this version because you can leave them both connected simultaneously. What's cool about this is whichever device you turn on first, the DAC will automatically select that and you're good to go. So you don't have to mess around with the switch or anything, which is really cool. Now continuing on in the back, you get two aux ports. One is a line out, one is a line in. The line in will send audio to your headset and you can control that volume separately on the source of course, or the volume wheel on the headset itself. And then naturally if you turn the volume up and down here. Now the line out will take the aux in and send it back out. The line out also sends out the game audio that's going to your headset and it also sends the mic audio out. So think of this as a nice uh, stream port to combine everything. In the SteelSeries GG software, you can set the line out to be speaker out, which is basically going to uh, output all three sources at full volume. If you set it to stream mode, stream mode will actually allow you to adjust the individual volume levels for all three sources so you can control it. This is good for production and streaming, of course, depending on how your whole system is set up it can make life easy. So I like that it has that feature. And the wireless version actually has that same feature. So if you think it's only tied to the wired one, kind of like how uh, the Astro Mixamp Pro works, um, you can use that same functionality on both versions of the Nova Pro. I will say though, when you are using line out in the stream or speaker, if you are using the game to chat mix, whether on PC with Sonar or on Xbox, adjusting your game to chat does affect the output of that stream port. So if you fade your volume all the way to chat, the output is only going to send the chat volume out and not any of the game. Conversely, if you go all the way to game, all you will hear is the game and the party chat won't come through. So it's interesting that they did that, but I think it helps give, it's better to have that control and set it to the middle setting than not be able to change it at all. So I just want to point out that that's how that works. Now there's a myth about sample rate that I want to squash now. Um, this is rated at 24 bit, 96 kilohertz, up to their whole high res marketing and the wireless version is not. And a lot of people think that because of that, this one is going to sound better solely because of the bit rate and they don't want to downgrade. I can tell you now the human ear can't really hear anything past 16 bit. It's, there's been so many scientific studies on this and yeah, it's cool that it has it and it's good to have the overhead, but don't feel like that's the reason why this will sound better than the wireless version. I will say that this does sound better than the wireless version because everything is attached with cables and cables have a better bandwidth than wireless. You also have lower latency. So from a performance and sound quality perspective, yes, this does sound better than the wireless version, but it's not because of the sample rate. If you want to get super nerdy, even if you set this at 24 bit, 48 kilohertz, as soon as you enable sonar, sonar is capping it at 16 bit, 48 kilohertz. 
So you're not benefiting from any of that extra overhead anyway, which means you have the same capability depending on which headset you buy. Um, I recommend setting in Windows your bit rate and sample rate to the 16-bit 48 kilohertz first, which is what you can see on my screen here. And then when you enable sonar, now there's no oversampling or extra processing your computer's doing to step up the signal to a 24-bit uh, depth. And because of that, in theory, you're reducing CPU usage because now your CPU is not doing oversampling processing. And in theory, you are reducing latency again because you're removing an extra layer of processing. I don't really think this is going to be a noticeable difference in real world, but because you're not benefiting from anything above the 16-bit, I figure it just can't hurt to try. And I tested this a ton, like hours of listening, going back and forth, bypassing sonar altogether, using the highest sample rate with flack lossless audio uh, music and I could not tell the difference even when I stepped down to 16 and I have a pretty good ear. So let's talk about comfort and build quality. Um, I, I like the Nova Pros a lot. I've reviewed a couple Novas now, the Pro Wireless and the Nova 7 and I like them both. I, I really love this headset and it's it's kind of crazy. I have a, I've never gotten rid of a headset that I've purchased or received for review. So I have at least 70 or 80 different headsets and not one of them's ever been damaged. This thing has been through hell. So this is the first headset I can say is very durable from a first-hand experience. Um, I got this right before I moved to a different state. And because this is right when the Novas first came out, I used the Nova wired and wireless almost exclusively for a month and a half, two months while I was on a break from my channel. So these went through a lot. And because I was moving, I was at a house in between the move because flooring got delayed and whatever it is. But because of that, this thing got knocked off the table. It's been dropped. This got scratched and it drives me crazy because I take care of my stuff and a lot of these things happened out of my control. Um, but I will say that's one of the drawbacks of having a wire. Yeah, you get the sound quality, but chairs with the little armrest, they act like a grappling hook for cords. So be really careful where you place your wire. Now this is held up fine, nothing broke. I got a really gnarly scuff on that ear cup. Let's get that into focus. Can you, yeah, you can see that white mark. It's, it's pretty rough to look at um, in this scratch too. Honestly, this gloss finish is pretty easy to scratch, so I'm not a huge fan of that. I think most people are gonna have little scratches once in a while. Just try to dust it lightly and don't rub your fingers on it if it's dirty or you'll kind of add some swirl marks. Overall though, build quality is excellent. It's really solid. Everything's plastic now, um, but it's very easy to adjust. Unlike the older Arctis line, which basically relied on that headband, the ski goggle adjustment, this still has that for comfort, which I love, but it is, now you have a telescoping yoke. You still have the single mounting point on the ear cup. I'm really not a huge fan of that. I, I actually haven't had any durability issues with it. I think I have about six or seven Steel Series Arctis headsets. They all still work fine. The problem is with the single mount, my biggest issue is it's a little bit harder to conform to your ear naturally. Um, it's not as flexible. It still makes a good seal, but I did find this headset is one of the most temperamental headsets I've ever used when it comes to maintaining a seal. If I open my mouth wide, if I yawn, if I take a bite of food, it typically breaks the seal, just my jaw moving. Um, and because of that, you lose some bass response. So it's not a deal breaker in normal use. You won't have any issues whatsoever. But it was interesting that it was kind of inconsistent in that regard. I do love the pads. This is a protein leather, which is softer than your traditional artificial leather. It's more durable because of that, and it actually runs cooler. So while this isn't as nice as the sport weed fabric that I usually prefer for long gaming sessions, from a sound quality perspective, these pads do sound better. Now the headset's rather light, so when you factor in that this band, which by the way, I always uh, recommend dropping it down uh, to the lower notch, that way you get this extra space here. It makes the clamp force a little bit tighter, which helps fix some of the seal issues. And honestly, there's so much adjustment here that even on the smallest setting, it still fits my head. So this is my ideal setup. It's actually really comfortable and the protein leather actually still maintains a pretty good temperature. So I do like the comfort. I will say I mentioned the whole um, being really sensitive to breaking a seal. Thin glasses will still be okay because these are so plush. It's insane. I mean, they are like really, really soft and squishy. It just feels great. So a thinner frame will be okay. If you have thicker frame glasses, you will likely lose some bass response. So when you're doing the EQ tuning, which I'll show later, 
you may want to boost the EQ tuning a little bit just to maintain that extra punch and, and immersion for the game. Now I will say one thing about the pads. I do like the size. Diameter wise, it's about two, just over two and a quarter inches. And as far as the width goes, you're at um, about one and three quarter. Now on the depth, so the depth is actually just under an inch. The, uh, they're still actually pretty deep. These still have more ear clearance than the uh, Nova Pro Wireless, but the Nova Pro Wireless have deeper cups. They have that active noise cancellation mic bump in them, which does touch your ear after a while and can get pretty annoying. These don't have any of that issue, so to me this is still much more comfortable. And I think the shallower pad actually helps with sound quality a little bit as well. Now the controls in the headset are really straightforward because you're pretty much going to be interfacing with the DAC. You do get a physical switch for the mic mute, which I like. You get a really solid volume rocker. This is a analog volume rocker, not digital, which because of that, if you plug this cord directly into a controller or something with a headphone jack, you still get volume control and you still get a mic mute. Telescoping mic is an awesome feature. I really like the layout of the Nova Pros. Um, I think they look really nice and then you get these swappable ear plates and headbands too. The microphone or, or sorry the headphone cable which also does the mic signal is recessed and that provides a really good connection. I'm not really worried about it breaking. So it feels everything just feels pretty solid but I want to talk about the game deck because I think this is kind of a big one as far as uh, features go and what you can do with it. Now you're going to spend most of your time making adjustments on the DAC itself. That's a big selling point to me with the Nova Pro. So once this is all set up correctly, you have this giant volume knob and you can see that the input is actually very, very fluid. It's pretty much in real time. It doesn't take a hard press to push this in. And when you do that, if sonar is configured correctly or if you're connected to an Xbox in Xbox mode, you will see your game to chat mix. So you can very quickly adjust it. I wish it had two dedicated dials one for chat and game, one for master volume, but at least it's fast enough and once you get used to it like muscle memory, you can see I can still adjust that very quickly. Now if you press and hold on this, you can get into some advanced settings. You have your USB input where you can select in case you do have multiple active at the same time and you want to toggle back and forth. This little ring is the back button by the way, that touch sensitive screen. Rotate the knob to audio options, I'm going to tap that. Equalizer. Right now I'm using sonar, so that shows up, which means I can't set any EQ on the DAC. If sonar is disabled, this will change, and you can customize the EQ settings on the DAC or through SteelSeries GG. Now if I go, the next setting over is gain high. That's how strong the amplifier output is. You can leave it high or medium. I really wouldn't go low. It, it won't get loud enough. So we're going to move over. Microphone side tone. There is side tone. It works extremely well, meaning there's no delay or odd echo. It sounds pretty natural. Not a lot of distortion or walkie-talkie effect. So if you don't like side tone, you can tap it and go to off, or I can boost it so you can really hear yourself speak. But when you go to high, you're going to hear a lot of background noise, and you hear like a hissing sound. So I typically prefer low or off. Microphone volume. This is a very sensitive mic as well, just like the Pro Wireless. So if you find that, especially on Xbox, if your mic's a little hot and you get a lot of feedback, Cut the mic volume down to like three or four. Um, and if people can't hear you, turn it back up, but maybe find that sweet spot. I left it at nine because mine actually has been working pretty well. It, I've had less issues with this one than I did on the wireless. I don't, I have never used this feature. You can disable the mic on the deck. I leave it disa I leave it set to enabled, or sorry, mic mute disabled so my mic works. If I ever need a mute, I just tap the mute button on the headset much faster than dealing with the deck. So I'm gonna hit back again and go to line out. The line out feature, the fact that you can adjust this on the DAC is amazing because if you're on the go, if you're actually playing on a console, it's nice to have this functionality. So I'm gonna rotate the stream and if I tap it, now I can adjust my main volume. I can adjust the aux input output volume. So basically if I have a phone playing music at full blast on the aux input, I can turn the phone to 50% for example and then my mic, of course, is how loud people are going to hear you speak. So it's really cool that it gives you that. And I'm going to go back to speakers, system settings. I can change the uh, brightness of the screen. I typically leave it on max bright because it's not that bright in the first place. Dim screen, I, I sh I've been wanting to increase this, so why not? It will darken automatically after a little bit. Um, you can set that timer. Tutorial shows you how to use the DAC and reset will obviously set everything back to factory. So there's a lot of settings you can do with this. However, I pretty much just use this for volume and game to chat mix because on this, I've got this set up for PC gaming and Sonar is much more capable 
for adjustments. All right, now I'm talking to you on the Nova Pro wired microphone. So the microphone sounds okay. There's not a lot of warmth to it. It's not overly clear. It has a slight walkie-talkie effect to it, but this is what it'll sound like on console. So if you're using this on PlayStation or Xbox, this is what you'll sound like to your friends. Again, it's not class leading, but I think it's passable. Now I did do some custom EQ work just like I did in my um, Arctis Nova 7 review that I just released. I used almost the same tune and now I'm talking to you on the new tune now. So I basically, you get rid of all the sub bass at the 31 Hertz and you could see the chart here. So pause it if you want the settings. I don't want to read through it so much this time. I did lower the 4, 8 and 16 kilohertz treble slightly compared to my 7 review. Um, I just think this had, this microphone got a little too bright sounding. So, but either way, I think this sounds better this way. And just again, as a pal palette cleanser, I'm going to go back. And this is what my voice sounds like without any custom EQ or anything like that. I am going to turn it on one more time though, and enable the AI noise cancellation and turn it up. So it's at 97% right now. This is what my voice sounds like. I'm going to do the whole ruler tapping the desk, background noise, scrapes. So it does get rid of it to an extent. And if I disable it completely and I do that same noise, this is what I sound like without the AI noise cancellation. And you're going to hear all this stuff, you know, in the background. It doesn't really block out much. It's not a unidirectional mic. Um, it's actually omnidirectional. So it does pick up some background noise if you're not using the noise cancellation. Anyway, that's what the mic sounds like. All right, now it's time to talk about sound quality. And I have a, um, I don't want to say a rigorous process, but I have my subjective side of the audio coverage of this or sound quality. And then I do a lot of measurements with a headphone measuring rig that I purchased so I can test frequency response, phasing, time delay, all kinds of interesting things. So I have the opinion side and the scientific measurement side. Um, on the side where I listen to things, I, which I do first, I don't measure first, I listen to a lot of the same songs over and over. Not saying the song is necessarily an amazing song or a terrible song, but there are particular nuances of different songs, and I use that as kind of a benchmark because I've heard those same songs on $5,000 headphones and not this, but $50 headphones, for example. So I'm going to drop an interesting song for you, so bear with me. There's a song called Exile. It's from Taylor Swift and Bon Iver, and it's not like some upbeat pop song. It's actually kind of slow. Um, but their voices are so unique in this song because Bon Iver has an incredibly warm, rich voice. And it starts off like within the first 10, 15 seconds of the song. He just instantly grabs you. Um, and then there's a lot of subtlety in that song that I, I frankly for a while didn't know certain things were there. And as I listen to it more, now I listen for those subtle cues. Like there's a bird chirping in the background, super, super faint. And not a lot of gaming headsets play that bird. And the Nova Pro Wire did. Um, not a lot of gaming headsets have accurate enough tonality, which is like how natural your voice sounds. They don't sound accurate enough where when you hear a song like this, it sounds too bassy and too warm, or it sounds too nasally or too sibilant, and the voices are piercing your ears. So this headset really gets close to sibilant on certain sounds. In this particular song, Taylor Swift's voice is a little bright and airy sounding, and it can kind of push it. Now, I did my own custom EQ tune later uh, that's coming in this review, and that helps it a little bit, but the way I tuned it is I pulled a little bit of the bass out and it really opened up the sound stage. So I'm, as you can tell, I'm really excited about this tune. But I, I just wanna start with this. So the music quality, even out of the box, it sounds pretty good. It's not that accurate. So um, once I custom tuned and I really start listening to it, it, it it's a pretty remarkable headset at this price range, to be honest. It really excels in music, and there's a surprising amount of bass all the way down low. So if you like hip hop and EDM, you can either leave the stock EQ profile or even boost it, and it'll handle it. They are 40 millimeter drivers, but surprisingly, they handle uh, higher volumes pretty well. I think they're a higher quality driver than what you find in the cheaper uh, Nova lineup. So um, music-wise, though, it's really good. Just tune it to your liking, because some songs will sound better or worse than others. Now, when it comes to gaming, to me, this was the, even as much as I was surprised by the music, I was even more surprised by the gaming performance because I've alluded to this with the other Steel Series reviews, but they are like just really doing well on the imaging and awareness side of things. So footstep placement, 
um, knowing where every object is and being able to pinpoint it, that's imaging, knowing exactly what direction it's coming from. Soundstage is the headset's ability to project distance of that object. So if something is really far away, you want to have an open soundstage to, or a wide soundstage to accurately convey some of the depth. You don't need that, and I find that sometimes a narrow soundstage can sound really good. It sounds more intimate, but on gaming and on FPS or open world games, it's much more um, immersive to have all of those environment sounds have more space. You know, if you close your eyes, can you do you feel like you're more in the space and you're not wearing headphones? The Nova Pro Wired is one of the best I have ever heard on a gaming headset when it comes to soundstage and imaging, period. The only ones that have come close on imaging and, and soundstage have been the VZR Model 1. Um, these are better than the Odyssey Penrose um, when it comes to that. The soundstage is, is better for sure. Um, and man, and I'm trying to think if there's anything that's... I, Astro actually has pretty good driver matching. The A40s and 50s actually do a really good job with imaging. They may not be the right sound profile for everyone, but they are very accurate for footsteps. Um, this just blew me away. I, just to cut right to it, I normally I get more specific uh, and scientific on my explanations, but I found in stock form it was great with a custom tune and the way I tune it on the DAC and sonar. Uh, it just it's unbelievable how wide the sound stage and how good the imaging is, and, and that applies for every game. It's not even just for footsteps at that point. Truly an amazing headset, one of the best I've heard at any price point. So I do want to start including frequency response measurements on most of my reviews now and on a headset like this, naturally, we're going to cover that. So um, this is what it looks like in stock form. And a lot of people are going to see a lot of squiggly lines and assume it sounds terrible. Just give it a shot. It actually sounds better than what the graph suggests. And honestly, if you see some of the graphs of cheaper headphones or headsets, they can be pretty shocking on how bad they are. So this isn't terrible. My tune fixes a lot of this, but the bass that you're getting here at the 90 hertz, 100 hertz, that's giving a little extra warmth to your sound. So that Bon Iver song earlier I was talking about, Exile, his voice sounds better almost in the stock tune because it's warmer. So if you like that richness, even this is okay. Now, it's more accurate to tune that out. So we're going to cover the sonar tune here in a moment. And then the bass picks back up down in the low frequency, so you still get those explosions and rumbles. It does dip a bit in the mid-range. This is a common tuning that I've seen with the Nova line in general. So I boost that up a little bit, but it's not major. You know, you're going from 87 decibels to 84. A three decibel swing is very, very minimal, to be honest. Um, as you get into the treble, the treble has always been the issue with Nova headphones. The wireless one had this issue, and the Arctis or Arctis Nova 7 had the same issue. It picks up around 2,000 hertz or 2 kilohertz, then it absolutely plummets in the 4 kilohertz range, has this odd spike, a dip, and then it picks back up. Up here in the six to seven kilohertz range, that's kind of where things can get a little sharp or ear piercing. So if you're sensitive to that, you can always pull that down in sonar. Four kilohertz, your ears, the pinna or your shape of your ear cartilage naturally amplifies four kilohertz. So if you boost it too much, it can actually have a harsh sound to the headset. You don't necessarily need it fully flat. So I see why a lot of headphone companies take that into account and tune that down a little bit. It's a little more aggressive on this headset than I've seen in other headphones, which provides um, results in slightly inconsistent travel response. So I'm gonna show you my tune measurement and then I'll show you how to do the tune to change it. So now the highlighted line, you can see I have a much flatter bass response. I pulled, a, honestly, almost a little bit too much bass. It's very, very neutral. This is closer to how things should sound from an accuracy standpoint. But if you listen to a lot of hip hop and EDM and you want that extra bass and rumble, lift the bass a little bit and I'll show you how to do that. But I, I softened up the mids, um, or I flattened up the mids, I should say. I softened up the two kilohertz range to pull a little bit of that edge off. I boosted the four kilohertz just slightly and I tweaked the treble a little bit. The treble is less ear piercing now, but it still has a lot of airiness to it. And once you apply this setting, yes, you lose a little bit of bass, but the soundstage and, and presentation of objects in game, especially if you play a first person shooter, it's seriously insane. I never heard Apex Legends sound this good on a gaming headset before. So if you play Apex Legends, try this tune. 
or put this on and go watch an Apex Legends gameplay video on YouTube. And it's, it's pretty shocking. So just to show you real quick, this is the Nova Pro wired DAC versus sonar. If they're both set to flat, if the headset pretty much measures the same. So you're not getting worse sound quality because you don't have sonar on your console. You can still benefit from the same sound profile I was describing originally. Now I did do a DAC tune to improve sound quality on the DAC, which you can save to the DAC which means when you plug it into your console or you know Xbox or PlayStation, you can benefit from that. So I'm gonna enable that. And you can see here on the DAC tune, it's flatter. It's not as flat as the um, sonar tune that I did, but for gaming on console, and I actually have a little more sub bass on console because I, I actually prefer that. And it sounds great for that. So, and then again, just to compare the sonar tune. So the gold one that's highlighted right now is the DAC tune. And now I just flipped it and this is the sonar tune. They're pretty comparable considering. So now I'm gonna show you how I tuned it in sonar. I'm gonna to go to my uh, Nova Pro Wire GT tune. Now I'm gonna read through these and I'll put the numbers on the screen so you can just type them in or save them. So I have at 25 Hertz, I did minus three dB with a Q of 0.5, which is how wide or narrow your notch is for adjusting that band of bass. At 62 Hertz, I did a four decibel increase with a 1.5 Q. Uh, 99 Hertz, you could type 100 if it's easier for you. Negative 5 dB with a 0.707 Q. 313 Hertz, four decibel lift with a 0.5 Q. I did a nice wide mid-range bump and that's what flattened out that mid-range. Uh, 1.46 kilohertz or when you type it in, type 1460 for 1460 Hertz. Hit enter. Um, and then you have your 2.5 decibel gain, 0.707Q. 2.2 kilohertz, negative two decibel gain, 0.2Q. 3.9 kilohertz, seven decibel gain, 4Q. 4.5 kilohertz, negative two decibel, and um, a point or sorry, a 5Q. So negative two decibels, 4.5 kilohertz, or 4,500 megahertz, or hertz, I should say, sorry. Um, and then a 5Q. So this part right here, all this aggressive notches, this is where I did a lot more of the treble tuning to kind of fix the inconsistent delivery I was getting out of it. And then I did a slight lift at uh, 9.25 kilohertz or 9,250 hertz, four decibel gain with a Q of five. This fixes a lot of the inconsistent treble, bass, mid-range response, etc. Should have said bass, mid-treble. Um, so what's cool about this, the, way, the reason why I like sonar Start with this as your baseline EQ. You can boost sub bass slightly if you're missing some of that rumble, but once you fix some of the general inconsistency issues, now you can use your bass slider down here to boost bass if you want some of that warmth back. You can increase or decrease your voice uh, setting, which is basically how shouty you want the headset to be. And then if you want the headset to be more detailed, treble forward, brighter sounding, you can boost the treble or pull it down. And what it's doing is it's lifting that entire band with the custom tune from the parametric EQ. So it's a really nice way of getting your baseline EQ and then just messing around with those three sliders to tweak it unless you need specifically more sub bass. I don't like using spatial audio. You can use Dolby Atmos or DTS and all that and do the tuning that way, but I typically leave it off. And honestly, if you do this tune, you'll be blown away at how much virtualization and all that spatial cues you get, even in stereo mode. It really is awesome. So this headset does actually still work really well with console. That's why I spent some time on the DAC tune. So I'm gonna open that up right now. You have to disable sonar to access the uh, built-in DAX EQ tuning. So disable software by clicking on settings or sonar by clicking on settings. Once you've done that, I'm gonna to go to my custom EQ here. This isn't a major EQ change. Um, screenshot this, take a picture of it, whatever you want, but it's negative 3.5. Um, 0.5 up, negative six down, one up, two up, zero, negative 2.5, 2.5 up, and then zero and zero. So this fixes some of the issues, but I can't really go much further because you don't have full control over what frequencies you're targeting. Overall though, I still think this sounds really good and you get some of that extra bass response back, which again, I really like on consoles. And while I'm on the settings, I'll just show you, you can also change the output here um, for the line out. And if you select streaming, this is another way you can quickly adjust it. Same with your microphone side tone and microphone sensitivity. So, and then settings here is basically just how long the OLED screen or the on-screen display times out or how bright it is. So what would a headset review be without comparing it to competitors? 
I have my tried and true Astro A40s. These have seen a lot of use. I used to use this on my desk primarily because, frankly, as a gaming setup, the controls and ease of use are almost as important as the sound quality. And I know that's going to rattle some feathers, but if you you get to a certain point where the headset's good enough, it's not going to make you a better player or a worse player when you get to a certain level of sound performance. It's just a matter of what you like more versus the other. However, to me, when I'm playing, I use this example a lot, so if you haven't seen my other reviews, great. Um, but when I'm playing a game like Call of Duty, I go into a vehicle, I can't hear my friends. I love that I can just quickly adjust towards voice on this little chat mixer, and then when I'm in Gulag and I wanna make them quiet, I turn this all the way to gain, and I can be, make them quiet and then change my volume. I actually really like the Astro A4. The problem with the A40 is it's old. It still has a micro USB port. It still relied on having an optical input for your sound because the DAC honestly on console does not sound great. It's a cheaper DAC than what you get in Steel Series. Again, this is older. Um, it still holds up really well. I actually like the Velour ear pads. They run a little warm after a while, but they're crazy comfortable. This is such a comfortable headset for long gaming more so than the Nova just because it's a semi open back design. So your ears breathe pretty well. Now the headband system is more comfortable on the Nova Pro. So depending on what your head shape is or what you like feeling, um, you may like one over the other. I still think this is a really nice sound out of the box. I think it actually needs less EQ tuning than this does. It's relatively flat. It doesn't have like the, the brightest clarity or detail, but it's still really nice for footsteps. Honestly, it's a solid headset. The problem is, it's the same price as the Nova Pro, and the Nova Pro, frankly, outguns it. I do like the Mixamp Pro more than the Nova Pro because I love having two separate dials. And I took this apart too. It's built pretty yeah, inside, but this whole metal, middle area is a metal plate to make this heavier, and it shows off when you're trying to adjust it. It just feels really solid. So I do like it. I hate the mic mute being an inline on the wire. It drives me insane. This is a much better setup, just being able to press in a button. Um, but that's the way it is. I, I think the A40 is really one of the only competitors to the Nova Pro Wired because they are designed so similar, getting the DAX and getting a decent quality, comfortable gaming headset. I just still want to give the edge to the Nova Pro, to be honest. Now, if for any reason you want to use the Nova Pro as an aux-based headset and only occasionally use the DAC, um, at that point, just get something like the Drop PC38X. This doesn't really require any EQ tuning. It may not have the same level of controls or feature sets or anything like that, but if you just want to plug something into a headphone jack, really hard to beat a headset like this for gaming. It just has a really natural, relatively flat sounding tune. So at the end of the day, I rarely say that any particular headset or product is the best or top tier in a particular category or price range. Um, this is really pushing that title though. Um, it's really hard to, because this is such a unique setup, it runs, it can connect to two consoles or two platforms at the same time. It's actually really comfortable. The sound performance is great, especially when you're looking at um, the competitive edge on uh, FPS or the immersion in a real world. It works really well for music. Um, it's reliable because there's a wire. It just, everything always worked. So it really checks all the boxes. I think um, based off this review, if there's something you heard that you didn't like, maybe that'll steer you in a different direction. But I think at $250, it is a seriously compelling option. Uh, it just sounds great, both music and games. And the Astro, I really do like. Um, if this wasn't around, I still think this would be one of the better ones in the 250 range wired because of all the controls and features. This is just like the modern version of that now. So um, I really think the Nova Pro lineup was a successful launch minus the ANC bump on the ear cup, which I think will get addressed with the new pads coming out in a couple weeks. Stay tuned for that video. Um, I, I love these things. So there it is. I actually texted my buddy once I played on Apex and I was like, cause he's a hardcore Apex player. I'm like, dude, you gotta get the Nova Pros. It is a game changer and he plays at a desk. So I think he's gonna absolutely love these. Um, thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you're here still, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm trying to grow the channel a bit. And if you do end up purchasing this and you get it through Amazon, don't forget to use that affiliate link below. That'll help support this vicious cycle of me buying more headsets and reviewing them. 
and then you possibly buying them because this is a dangerous hobby. So uh, thank you again, all of you so much for the support and the growth and all the kind words you leave in the comments. And with that being said, I will see you next time. Bye.